I didn't get my video up yesterday, sorry about that. I had some kind of bad personal news life stuff going on, so luckily this evening I'm feeling much better. Uh, mainly thanks to discovering this gem. I defy you to listen to that and not just feel overjoyed. So you've probably noticed more news stories cropping up this week about the fact that it's International Women's Day. And one that I noticed in particular was revealed the best and worst places to be a woman. They've categorised there are 20 different categories. Spoilers. The UK doesn't top any of them. Cool UK! Yay! So proud. The best place to be a woman is apparently Iceland. Iceland has the greatest equality between men and women, taking into account politics, education and employment, and health indicators. The UK comes in at 16th place, down one since 2010. The worst is Yemen, and the most dangerous is Afghanistan. Best place to be a politician is Rwanda. Rwanda is the only nation in which females make up the majority of parliamentarians. Women hold 45 out of 80 seats. A female MP in Rwanda said, I felt it was I was given a special mission, the voice of the women who were the most victimised by the genocide. This is where laws are made, and the women are here are highly educated. We can raise issues affecting women in Parliament and are listened to as much, or even more, than the men. Best place to be head of state is Sri Lanka. Women have run Sri Lanka for 23 years. The UK comes in at 7th place, while dozens of countries, including Spain and Sweden, have never had a female head of government. Best place to be a mother is apparently Norway. It says that Norway is the best place to be a mother with low risks of maternal mortality of only 1 in 7,600. It also lists the best place to give birth as Greece. Greece is the world's safest place to give birth with a 1 in 31,800 risk of dying in childbirth. So I'm not really sure what that difference is between Norway being the best place to be a mother but Greece being the best place to give birth. They don't really qualify what that means. And the worst is Afghanistan, where a woman is at least 200 times more likely to die during childbirth than from bombs or bullets. And the world's newest country, South Sudan. And there's a quote, We see so many women die unnecessarily during pregnancy, 16 mothers every day. If women are not dying from pregnancy in the UK, why should they in South Sudan? Best place to be a top dog by which they mean a senior executive, which is Thailand. Thailand has the greatest percentage of women in senior management, 45%. The UK did not rank in the top 20 countries, with only 23% of senior management made up of women. Best place for labour force participation is Burundi, which is apparently the only country where the female labour force participation rate is at 92%, is higher than that of men, 88%. Now that obviously just means labour in terms of paid labour and doesn't necessarily reflect what your job is, it just means that more women are going out to work in recognised jobs rather than in unpaid work, by which we mean caring for elderly, caring for children, cooking, cleaning, maintaining their house, maintaining finances, which brings us next on to the best place to be a lady of leisure. Women in Denmark apparently have more time for leisure because they only spend 57 more minutes each day on unpaid work than men. I'm presuming if Denmark is winning that particular spot with 57 more minutes each day on unpaid work than men, that means that there isn't a single country in the world where men are doing more unpaid work than women. Going back to actual paid work, Luxembourg shares the top spot with Norway for estimated earned income, when income is capped at $40,000, women and men are as likely to earn the same amount. US dollars, sorry, that was really, really westernised of me, I should uh, distinguish that. And it says when income is capped at 40000 US dollars, what about when you're earning more than 40000 US dollars? I'm not sure, that, that seems a bit of a, a bit of an odd statistic to me. Sweden is apparently the best place to be a woman in the arts. The Swedish Film Institute mandates that film grants be distributed evenly between men and women and there are quotas for women in film production. In the UK, only 6% of film directors 
and 12% of screenwriters are women, which uh, explains a lot about women's rep- representation in UK uh, media. <laughs> um, not so who. Another one of my favourites for being being proud for, of the UK. The best place to be a journalist, which is the Caribbean. The Caribbean is the region with the highest proportion of TV, print and radio news stories reported by women, 45%. In the UK, about 9% of national newspaper editors are women. Again, we're not controlling the media, which is why our stories aren't being told. This being a set of statistics in a newspaper, we have to take it with a fairly hefty pinch of salt. There's no link to the source to actually look at the data and how they've actually found things like the how the, they've defined certain criteria. But I thought that was a really interesting article. Obviously, I'm just reading about this from the UK. So if you are from any of the countries I've mentioned or any of the countries not mentioned and you would like to do a video speaking about your experience as a woman in that country, then please, by all means, do get in touch. You can leave a response video underneath this video and we'll add it to the playlist for this week. But you can also, at any time, send in a guest video and we'll put it up on the weekend. Um, Happy International Women's Day for this Thursday. Bye!